Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. Are you, you know how we do. We always yeah, keep it 100. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. So last night I had put some women's basketball on my parlay ticket, right? And they had me thinking, like, do women really want that spotlight on them like that? You feel me? Like, I mean, I understand we living in the era of the women empowerment movement and stuff like that, but women's basketball, do y'all really want that spotlight on y'all like that? Because y'all gonna get treated just like the men. Bitch, grab the ball! Oh my god, get this hoe out the game! And we ain't trying to hear none of that respect the women, man. So we ain't trying to hear none of that. Like, don't get me wrong. I love women. This tall ass hoe ain't grab man rebound. Tall for nothing. I'm just saying, if y'all want to be treated equal, then this what comes with the territory. So don't take it personal. It's just we be trying to get money. Bitch, you is not hurt. Stop all that whining and get your Ernie Johnson looking ass back on defense. Damn. But at the end of the day, it's just a sport and, and people shouldn't be getting too out of character. Cause like I was always told, if you can't stand to lose it, then don't bet it. You ball head ass hoes, sorry as fuck. Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. We always keep it 100. I am your host, Harrison. <laughs> Um, another episode of the 8 More Than 92 podcast and you know i just had to keep it 100 but i thought you know it's no fun unless the homies get some so you know i decided to you know bring gang gang with me <clears throat> and had that young boy naji with me today so uh what's good with you man um living it out there in uh hiroshima japan uh i let everybody know that you went out there you wanted to study the way of the samurai and you are on your journey of cleansing, healing, and spiritualness before you can take that path on to be one of the Ronin and be one of the Shogun. So uh, how's everything hanging your way? Pause. Everything good, man. You know, I'm out here at Fuji, actually, by the mountains. But, I mean, everything been good, man. Just kind of, you know, learning the culture, going out, seeing new stuff. Um, had my mom's out here for a while, but she back in the states. Um, but yeah, man, it's just it's just totally different. I ain't gonna lie, it's it's night and day being in Japan from the states. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's super nice, ain't no crime. You know, like the normal the normal things that you would never think about. So everything been good, man. Honestly, everything been like as good as it can be. I tell people all the time, like I feel like people who never travel for real for real are the people that kind of like want to go to Japan. Like, I feel like if you traveled already or done stuff, like Japan is one of them places like when it's time to go, <clears throat> it's time to go. And to me, like, because I had been places, because I explored the world, because traveling wasn't new to me, Japan was that place for me. Is it like that for you over there? Well, I, I would say, what I'm going to say about Japan is, like, I'm here by myself. I feel like if you like, got your kids or you know you got your old lady or your wife or whatever i feel like japan probably one of the best places you can be because it's just so much stuff to do like they got a disney world they got a universe studios they got theme parks they got all kind of food like you literally can go see a different show or act it's like being in vegas and cali and florida all in one uh but like you said the, the one thing you don't see is you don't see us out here. So it's like the most cultured, uncultured place. Cause you're gonna see our culture out here, but you ain't gonna see black people out here. You like I seen a dude with a Fubu shirt on, you're gonna see baggy jeans, you every restaurant and any place you go to, they only playing black hip hop, R and B. So you see the culture out here, you just don't you don't see us out here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the most culture, uncultured place I've been. But like I said, I mean it's 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 like the uh, introverts paradise because nobody's gonna mess with you. Like you can kind of do everything you want to. Nobody's gonna mess with you. They're gonna let you do your own thing. So if you kind of like like to be to yourself and kind of you know explore stuff like this, this is like the perfect place because because you can literally every day you can go to another city and find something brand new to do. So I mean it, it's cool. Like but I I I do say that I like being in the states. You know what I'm saying? I like our food. I don't like have to read every product that I pick up because it's all in Japanese. And in a lot of places, people just really just speak Japanese. 
Like, it ain't no English. That's what I tell people all the time. Like, it's cool for a little bit, then 7 Eleven food get tiring, and you get tired. Of, it's like chew highs get old, um, the spaghetti get old. The whatever I can't remember like it is. Then the grocery stores they don't have nothing for real, for real. The commissary overpriced because they can't get anything. You paying like extras hell if you do try to eat the fast food. They got it. Then that regular food is just pork of some type of way, or rice, or this, or curry. And yeah, it's just. And then the people don't speak English like it is. And then when like it's not, it's not like as updated as people want to think. Like they not, they not in the damn future. It's not the Jetsons. Like it's. It's traditional culture and it's like old style buildings plus and so it doesn't really help if what you're trying to describe to people isn't kind of what you want over here so even if you have a translator over here if they don't really know how to put it in words it really doesn't help but i mean it's cool for the time being but like once you hit like your plateau i mean once you hit your peak it's time to go yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I've been here six months and I feel like I'm almost at that, you know, I'm trying to go. But I, I mean, like I said, the one thing that I wish we did have in the States is the no crime. Like you can leave your wallet sitting on top of your car with money sticking out and ain't nobody going to mess with it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like ain't nobody. Like I said, nobody's going to mess with your stuff like that. Ain't nobody going to steal your stuff unless you're on base. When you're on base, you're in America. So you yeah. better not leave nothing out. You better not leave nothing, nothing unlocked when you're on base. Yeah. So like I said, it, it is what it is. It's cool for the experience to me. Like it, you know, I, I I'm good on it. Um, I was ready to go. Plus all the stuff like watching sports and all that type of shit. I hated watching football Monday morning on the highlights if I could. If I had to watch a Tyson game, I had to hop up at like three, four in the morning, two, three to watch the game. You gotta watch if anything happened on Sunday. The fights, fights come on at seven in the morning. Who want to watch a you know a UFC fight or a boxing fight at seven in the morning? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, so like, people, we're just, people. We're just WNBA, NBA on and shit. That shit is early as hell. Like people don't understand. Like uh, for Monday, you gotta wait till Tuesday to really do anything for real because you gotta let the weekend happen and then a Monday happen in the states in order to like let any type of news happen. So that Monday in Japan. It's so boring. Plus, you can only use they unless you take T-Mobile over there. You can only use a sales service. So then you got SoftBank, if I'm not mistaken, right? Bank. Yep, I got SoftBank. Yeah, you get you only got a certain amount of data, which ain't shit. Um, so you really can't search the internet, huh? Mine is unlimited, but it's just I can't I can't call or nobody and nothing I can't do nothing like that. So I have to FaceTime you, WhatsApp you, or Instagram and Facebook you. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't. Yeah. But I getting this, I end up buying this little app that's like nine dollars a month, and then I got like another phone number and I can call and stuff like that. But because of what was hard for me was like if my bills are messed up, if my phone bill back home or something back home I got to pay messed up, I can't call. If I call on my phone, they charge me a dollar a minute. So you know what I'm saying? Like that shit was kind of like hell, but now I got that little app, so that's that's kind of been helping everything. Yeah, so it is what it is, but man, we could uh you know jump to what's keeping everything breezy. Uh you want to jump into what you wanted to say on Kendrick, you want to jump into what's current. Like what what you what you want to do? We can jump into some we can jump into some some current or whatever. Oh, okay. So uh, we could take it back to uh, the BT Wars happened about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Um, and they had a particular segment to where they honor everybody that has fallen, and a particular person got honored Orenthal James Simpson for the people who didn't know that was his first name. OJ uh, Simpson was honored as the people that had died this year, and one of the people that took particular, um. <laughs> Yeah, one of the people that took particular issue with this was Stephen A. Smith, who sat there and had issue with, uh, um, <coughs> who had issue with the BT honoring O.J. Simpson with anybody that fallen this year, mainly because of not because of his football career, what he did for that, but mainly because he was arrested and on trial for the murder of Nicole Simpson Brown or Nicole Brown Simpson. Um, huh? He was acquitted for. So, uh, for, and uh, for the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson, 
and uh he just sat there and felt like for the person that oj was you know it just didn't wasn't a good look to put uh somebody known for murder up there with people that had died for remembering that sparked like from Najee. Uh, you seen a lot of outcry for Stephen A was cooning and they felt like for somebody that was acquitted that it was unfair and it was a way to pin the black person down for doing unjust things to one another. I wanted to get your take on what you felt that that was and did you feel like it was just. And let me see if I can get the clip for us right here. Hold you got folks outside the community. See that? See that shit? TMZ talking about it. NBC talking about it, CNBC talking about it, CBS talking about it, USA Today talking about it, PBS, everybody but PBS. When that kind of stuff happens, how do you think that benefits us? And that's a story that we don't get into nearly as much as we should. Did, ever, did it ever occur to anybody? To remind yourself of the responsibility we have. I'm not blaming any of the folks there in the audience. They didn't know. And even though PET is owned by Paramount, it's still BT. Black folks everywhere. All up in there. And that's what we celebrate. We, as a community, are going to be held accountable for that. Subliminally, subconsciously. People are going to look at us with raised eyebrows and think as a community, oh, you down with that? You cool with that. That's what you celebrate. The collective whole is what matters. Not one individual, not one individual. God rest his soul. God will deal with him because God knows what he did and what he didn't do. It ain't for me to judge or anybody else to judge. But we saw what we saw. The trial was televised. His actions and his dismissiveness and disassociation and distance from the black community was self-inflicted. He created that. He wanted nothing to do with us. Where's this affinity for him? Where's the evidence that he ever gave a shit about us? I wanted to make sure I heard that to make sure it furthers my point on what I want to say. But after hearing what he had to say, uh, what is your take on the whole Stephen A. OJ versus? Oh, uh, I don't know, man. That's kind of the killer in Manila. What do you have? That's kinda, All right, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of like a like a kind of fucked up situation, because because at the same time, you know, OJ said, "I'm not black. I'm OJ." We know that. You know, what I'm saying OJ did disassociate himself from us and stuff like that. But at the same time, he's still a black man. So him dying, who else going? Who else going to? Uh, have him in memory, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nobody else go post him. And then, like you said, if if we're going off of, you know, the trial and stuff like that, if you really think back at that time when OJ got acquitted for the trial, and they say he didn't do it, everybody in the world, like, if you go back and look at those films of the news and the black community and stuff like that, people were cheering. Like, they were happy all over the world. Every black person in the whole world was happy. You know what I'm saying? It was almost like Rodney King. Like, it, everybody was watching and everybody was happy that OJ got off. So, you know, like, yeah, we can say that, but if we're gonna, if we're gonna say that we're gonna disown him because, you know, we think of what he did and stuff like that, then how the hell are we celebrating anybody? You know what I'm saying? Half the rappers and the music industry are dope boys and selling drugs and, you know, and did this. You got you got NFL players that um, damn near went to trial for killing people like that, say, like Ray Lewis or, you know, you got all kind of stuff that's happened to people in the, in the past and in the times. So what makes that any different? Like, why are we going to just like, no. Nah, fuck OJ, but we celebrate all these other people that's doing all this other crazy ass shit, you know what I'm saying, so, I mean, I don't know, I, I just think that, you know, like, it's kind of not fair, because at the same time, this man is dead now, so we can't, we can't, he can't even defend himself, or, you know, even if he would have defended himself or not, you know what I'm saying, so I, I just think, it's a sticky situation when I'm, when you talk about somebody that's dead, that's kind of fucked up, and, you know what I'm saying, this person got family, and you know they family got to see you know they they mourning for somebody and then they got to see you talk about their the person they mourning for on national tv uh that he shouldn't be uh uh a memorable person or we shouldn't be talking about we shouldn't be celebrating them so i, I don't know i think it's i think it's kind of fucked up like i said because it's no proof that we have of what he did or what he didn't do you know what i'm saying of, like it's no way that we can say that for sure and that's just like anybody else i hope oj makes gets a scholarship and makes all team all hell American in the all American game in hell. OJ can eat a dick. I said this on multiple fucking occasions. 
Fuck Orenthal James Simpson. I'd rather drink Sunny D than drink OJ. All right, pause. That was wild as um, but all of the way is I won't drink orange juice anymore just to disassociate myself with OJ. That's how much of a piece of shit that nigga that nigga is. Okay, fuck OJ. Okay, and I'm glad I played the whole clip. And the reason why I say that is simply because he didn't say anything disparaging about OJ. And and to the fact of the the trial, he said it's um he said disingenuous. You know, he said we know what he did. You know, he said he know what he said. He said only he said only God. He said he said God rest his soul. He said God rest his soul. He knows what he did or did not do. That's what he said. He said no, he did or did not do. But he said it's disingenuous to the family and with the time. But he said it in there. He said the same reason why I say fuck that nigga, OJ was and to credit he said it about white people too he wasn't black he wasn't white he was oj was cool OJ. we get that for the part when they needed him for the olympics but let's not act like that nigga then this he wasn't shucking and driving when it was trial time going to black churches he wasn't they didn't have to put up black pictures in his house to convince a jury let's not act like this nigga wasn't Asking the police, why is all these niggas in Brentwood when he got that five star escort from a police chase? Okay, let's not act like this nigga was a piece wasn't a piece of shit. Now, through all in all, that nigga was cold on the football field, and at one point, that motherfucker was an action star and a TV specialist. Okay, cool, we get it. But at one point, just as clean and cool as your jukes were. Your stabbing and dashing was just as good. And your final move wasn't that last day on the field. It was the way you was able to two-step out that house to get the fuck up out of there. You pulled the spin move on that camera, and you CC, boom, okay? Now, let's take away the fact that all the other... If the glove didn't fit, we must have You know what? If the glove didn't fit, he must have quit. But then he said, run that shit back, Turbo. If I would have did it, let me show you how I would have spent it. That was all the proof any real nigga would have needed, okay? Let me tell you why OJ would not have been celebrated at my Black Entertainment Award, okay? Ain't no nigga getting off a trial, acquitted for some shit. You saw when Snoop, you saw when Snoop, you saw when... You saw when Snoop got acquitted. What's the famous thing you see from Snoop? When Snoop get acquitted, you all you see is this. Doing all this. When Ray Lewis got acquitted from his murder incident, all you see is Ray Lewis quoting, and then when I grab the grass, and then the grass is so divine, like the divine Lord himself, all you do is hear scriptures. All right? I ain't never seen a nigga go to quit it for murder, talking about I'm going to write the best-selling children's book, talking about if I would have did it. Little Jerry saw a knife. Little Jerry uh, grabbed it twice. Little Jerry saw the gun. He told that big hitch, go and run. I don't never seen a nigga sit there and say, rub it in the face of the people that you just possibly took their daughter and her boyfriend and killed and got away with it and then said, I'm going to put out a paper book volume and I'm going to put out a, a hard copy, whatever the other version is. I'm going to even put out an audio version of if, if I would have did it. I'm going to narrate what was going on through my mind in my own words and then think that I was somehow I was somehow no involvement in this OJ trial, okay? Before we get to the trial, because we can spend all day on that one, OJ disassociated himself with the black culture, okay? That is the whole purpose of what happened. And before we run to this whole he was acquitted type shit, you niggas never care about the law for anything. You motherfuckers don't even drive the speed limit. The speed limit say 65, y'all going 80 on the fucking highway, okay? They say don't drink and drive. You say I'm good instead of calling the fucking Uber, okay? You ain't supposed to go into work high. You're smelling like a pound, okay? You niggas don't trust the justice system for shit, all right? Now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden the justice system got it right with OJ because he was acquitted. These niggas never get it right, all right? When the fuck is an acquittal ever meant anything? Jonathan Majors just got found uh, for assault, for domestic violence, for accidental assault, for a bitch getting hurt, for a her finger getting uh hurt and mangled well he moving you out the way from chasing him down the street i'm talking about he was running like i thought he was auditioning to be tyson gay that's how well, fast he was out there 
<laughs> actually, he got he got the assault for trying to grab his phone from her, and she trying to attack him. And I said, "Damn!" I said, "Like you said, this man ran like it was the Olympics. He's running from her, and they talk about he's the attacker. That's that's kind of crazy." I thought, like I said, I thought he was auditioning for Tyson Gay. The bio, the autobiography of Tyson Gay, the American Wonder. Okay, that's how fast that motherfucker was running down the street, and somehow he still got found. I don't see nobody sitting there really talking about he was acquitted. No, because it just system ain't shit. You niggas never know the law until well, he, he got, you. He got, he got, he got, he got charges. OJ got acquitted. He didn't get no charges. OJ got acquitted. But some shit that OJ probably did. Okay, the only time that you see, you know who, you know who been acquitted, you know who been acquitted for more shit that he done did, James St. Patrick and Tyreek. All right, oh, them two niggas been acquitted for more murders that we done seen with our very eyes than OJ. All right, OJ, the only nigga I know that can make a joke after interview. OJ, the only nigga I know. OJ, the only nigga I know that will make a joke on an interview going. Yeah, that was, All that right. was a little crazy. That was a little crazy. <laughs> okay. So my issue is with that nigga right there. He never wanted to be black. They he didn't want he wanted to shuck and job until it was time. Until it was time to sit there and represent the culture. OJ can eat a fucking dick. I hope that nigga swallowing Satan balls right now on a hundred uh, four hundred degrees fucking Fahrenheit. All right. I hope that nigga walking around in a in a USC jock strap just to make uh Hitler happy on Sundays. All right. That, fuck that nigga. That nigga didn't give a fuck about us. And now y'all niggas out here saying anything. I'm so tired of this wishy washy ass fucking double standard ass culture you niggas don't know shit about the law how do i know that is because you niggas are paying too much in child support where y'all can just go update y'all working situation and lower it you won't go get a parenting plan for your own fucking kids you just gonna sit there and say if your baby mama ain't tripping i'm gonna go pick my son up this week shut the fuck up telling somebody what it is to be a coon all you real niggas out here Keep saying what it is to be real and what it is to be black, calling Stephen A. Coon. This nigga done did more for the probably the black community with the resources that he has than you'll ever do for even your uncle, uncles and aunties. All right. We we pick and choose what's the standard of black, what's not the standard, who keeping it real, who keeping it not. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that bitch ass pop out concert. All right. I'll say this right now. The nigga from Canada did more for the niggas in LA. Yes, the nigga oh, who was in, the nigga. Okay, yes, no, no shut up. No, I'm gone. No, no. The nigga, the nigga, the nigga. No, I'm not changing. I'm gonna say this two. I'm gonna say this five seconds. I'm gonna say this five seconds. The nigga from Canada did more for the motherfucker in L.A. He put all you niggas on one stage. Yet you can't get a feature from him. Yet half of the niggas that was on stage got a Drake feature. All right, the nigga from Canada made you feel Demar. Like you was one on one, let him stay in your house because he let you in a not like us uh, video. Demar, you out there sitting up there looking out with your strong braids. YG, who do you love? Okay, come on now. Uh, Roddy Rich out here looking like Roddy's bitch. Uh, come on now. I'm not trying to hear that. None of you niggas will get a Drake feature. I mean, none of you niggas will get a Kendrick feature, but he let you come out for a concert. Well, we had to Google half of you niggas name. So if that's your pop out, whatever, cool. Eat a dick, nigga. All I'm saying for this same instance, Stephen A, Shannon Sharp, all these cooning as y'all said they doing. They doing um when when the draft was in Tennessee, Stephen A could have had Vanderbilt, he could have had Belmont, he could have all these people play show out for the draft. He had Tennessee State University come play for first take the aristocrat band. Um, Shannon Sharp, whenever they get a chance, they shout out Savannah State. And they shout out Winston Salem University. They shout out HBCUs whenever they get a chance. First take black as fuck. They got Ryan Clark. They got Monica McNutts. They got um, even though some of the people that they got black married to a white spouse, they ain't say nothing about that. They got uh Damian Woody, they got um who's the big dude with the glasses? Black dude. I'm asking the wrong person. Anyways, it's black as hell. Other than Shannon, like I said, no, and any like any chance they saying somebody they saying somebody cooning, yet y'all never have no type of way of showing how you helping the community and helping it grow. I never see all these niggas that sit there. Y'all niggas sit there and tell niggas to go get an LLC, and y'all niggas at home. Y'all niggas, I see more niggas I mean, telling people to go get a CDL or LLC, and I'll cut my I mean, rant right what here. I the, what I would say about the cooning shit, I, I just hate that they 
try to say that they cooning and shit be, you know, because of their opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't really like that part just because, you know, like, I re what I respect about Stephen A. Smith is that, you know, he said how he felt about it. You know what I'm saying? Just like you said how you just felt about, you know, about OJ and shit like that. Like, cool, that's how you felt. You know, because, like like I said, I think OJ don't give a fuck about the black community, never did give a fuck about the black community. Like, we all know that. My only take on it was it's a dead person. Like, I don't care about, like, I'm never going to ill will and talk bad down. Like, I, that's fucked up. That For me, I think that's fucked up. But at the same time, do I think OJ gave a fuck about it? No. He didn't give a fuck about the black community. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, at the same time, we got so many people that do so much wrong shit in the black community. Like, we like, what do we really celebrate? That that that's that was my argument. My argument is you got a whole bunch of people on trial that done kill people that's that's giving that's giving crack to the community, that's doing all kind of crazy shit that's fucking the community up. But we celebrate those people. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like it shouldn't been like he died. Cool. They they say, oh, the memory, you know, OJ Simpson died, blah, blah, blah. Like they didn't go out and do no motherfucking where they got motherfuckers acting out and gave a shout out like they did Usher or some shit. That would have been a stretch. But them saying like, hey, in remembrance of this person, I think that's in respect because it's, he is a black man, regardless of that bullshit. Because like I said, once again, we start to. Like when it's the white people, everything cool. But when you know what I'm saying, like when it's the black people, we're gonna break, we go, we gonna talk bad about them and fuck this nigga and blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Like he's still a black dude. You know, like he could have did what he did, whatever. But he's dead now. So you know, in, in remembrance of him, cool. That's all he gonna get. We're not gonna go out and do no no special on the nigga. You know what I'm saying? I think so, what man. I think what I have an issue with black people is I think black people tear black people down. And then when a nigga die, then you want to sit there and honor a nigga. But then also at the same time, let's just go to like Jonathan Majors, perfect example, right? Jonathan Majors right now was dressing everything. Remember, as soon as he started showing anime, the nigga was corny. Or Michael B. Jordan, he was corny up to a certain point, and the nigga get muscles. Um, what is the girl's name from Abbott Elementary, the main character? Um, Quinta Burson. She was corny in school. You break black people down. And then what happens is OJ, in my opinion, he was getting a fair assessment. Like why I wouldn't want him on there because of the stuff that he did. Now I put it like this, right? Okay. Even easier. Let, let me say it like this. I ain't going to do this. If Diddy die tomorrow, is it going to be a problem? Diddy up there? That, that's different. If Diddy, no, 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 no. If Diddy, if Diddy, Listen, no, listen, listen. Like you asked me a question. Let me answer. The reason why it's different is because right now Diddy is on trial for shit that they're saying they're accusing. We see him beat the shit out of somebody. We like we seen it with our eyes. You're talking about OJ. You're blaming for some shit that he was found out guilty for. We can't we can't keep saying, well, we might. Oh, we don't know. Oh, he was found out guilty. That's she it. Got you know they got they, they, she got pictures of her neck being strangled, picture late. But I'm what I'm he saying is what I'm saying, what I'm saying is what I'm saying is what I'm saying is what I'm saying is he's found guilty we seen him beat the remember, shit you remember when ray beat rice beat you remember when ray rice you remember when ray rice got cut that girl. okay you remember when he said it's the same thing i told y'all and then they was like yeah but the video make it look worse we can't move the goalpost now for diddy diddy also at the same time beat the shit out of cassie but he also gave us biggie he also gave us mary j blige he also gave us cupid doesn't matter R. Kelly gave us okay. Everything. If R. Kelly died right now, we supposed to. I'm saying no, but I'm saying no. I'm saying no. I'm saying no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not advocating. I'm, I'm not advocating. What I'm saying to it is, you. If you were you right now would be Stephen A. In Stephen A.'s position, you would be the one advocating for the victims, and right now, you are doing exactly what he did. You get what I'm saying now. All he did was advocate for the victim and still all he did was keep his mindset in the time. But but what I'm saying is you like it's the difference between those people like the Diddy's and the R. Kelly's and the, and the shit like that is they were found guilty. We seen it. OJ, we didn't see, like I said, if you think about the times we think about right now, if you think about the times when this trial was going on. Every black person in America was cheering. You can go and find the footage. Like when they when they say he was not guilty, every black person in the whole world was cheering. Like why 
black people was mad as hell. It was crazy. On it was crazy everywhere. They had cameras everywhere. So now you know what I'm saying they have painted this. They have painted this picture. You know, but still, it was nothing ever found against him. So we can't. We can't just be like, oh well, you, well we already know it. We seen. No, we we don't know because, like I said, in that if that's the case, in that time it would have been different. People would have felt different about it, but they didn't. Everybody was happy as hell that he that he didn't get charged. Like everybody, all the black people, like it's crazy. The white people look mad as hell. All the black people was happy about that shit. So he can't. It's not the same thing as Diddy. It's not the same. We seen Diddy drag a girl, kick her while she down. Like that shit crazy. Like that's some crazy ass shit. You know what I'm saying? And then so all made you shake your tail feather. He's still a black black man. man. He made you shake your tail feather. Take that ass to the flow, hop something, do something, shake your tail, feather. No, but he ain't been acquitted. He ain't been charging nothing though. We don't know if she stole something and ran out the room with his shit. We just know that we seen him on camera, but we can go ahead and change it. Uh, but yeah, but we can move it there. So I got a question for you. All right. So what's the appropriate way to greet your significant other? For me as a homeboy to greet a significant other. Like if I was like, yo, what's up, Josh? And I see your girl. Should I hit her with the the, the wave, uh, like head nod, hand gesture up in the air? Should I shake her hand? You know, should I give her a hug? Like you tell me what you feel like is appropriate. I mean, I, f- I feel like it just depends on how. You know, like how often y'all see each other, like how close y'all are. You know what I'm saying? Because gotcha. I can, and like I can be close. That that say like, you know, if I'm with you and I see you and your old lady and we hung out and I, you know, I know your old lady, we cool. I'm be like, damn, hey, how you doing? Like, and, and it depends on that person. You know what I'm saying? Because that person, she might not be a, they might not be no hugger. They might not be no, you know, they might be kind of shy away. But you know, it depends on that person. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I if I see like my best friend, I say I see DJ. And him and his wife. Shit, I've been knowing his wife for goddamn 12 years. So when I see her, I'm gonna say, hey, I, I'm a hugger. You know, like, damn, what's going on? You know, hey, what's going on? Even if I even if I see her out somewhere and I don't see DJ, we still gonna have a conversation like we friends because we are. So gotcha. I mean, I think it just depends on the person, the how, what's your relationship or how close you are to that person. Gotcha. So you know, yeah, you cool. You know some cultures, some cultures, they kiss, they kiss them on the cheek and shit. Some that's it just oh, depends okay. on the culture. Is. We, we we not that culture. So you cool with this? Huh? You you cool with that, right? So if you see if you I, see I, my I, girl, I didn't see I didn't see, nothing, I didn't see nothing wrong with that because. It was a, you know, what I'm saying like, damn, like we cool. Like I know people that I'm cool with like that, and I'm just like, oh my god, nigga, I ain't seen you in so long. Like, you know, what I'm saying like, yeah, I, and he don't. And the other thing is, the 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 big difference is he don't know Jonathan Majors. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not, I'm not your friend. I'm, I'm that person. I'm her friend. You know what I'm saying? So that's different than I know you. And I and I met your wife, you know what I'm saying? And I know her. That's a different relationship than because like that say like my best friend Asia, that's my best friend. She get married or whatever, and I ain't seen her in a minute. I'm gonna be like, oh my God, dude, what's good? You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's my best friend. Like I know her. Like I don't know the male. So you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. That's so that make it even more suspicious with the answer. Um, but like that made even more reason just to shake my hand. You lifting me up in the air like that. For context of people don't know, um, you know, this has been going around. Michael Easley been a villain. But y'all gotta remember when you're dealing with Michael Ely, you gotta really watch what you say to him because Michael Ely, Michael Ely would drop his own kids. Michael Ely would drop his own kids out the window. So if you really think he give a so fuck you about who he hugging, you say that's like you ain't Michael Ely your best friend. And y'all know each other. Y'all, y'all I'm just saying, run. like, I, I, if you know Mike, like I know Mike. Look, my, when you got light eyes, they put you in a special group chat. All right, it's called the Bright Association. Right. All right. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to say it's the bright eye. They call us the bright eye boys. All right. So it, the BEBs. All right. The BEB. BEB. BEB hoots. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I just want you to know. So I, I hit Mike about this and I said, like, Mike, Mike, you out of pocket. And I was just like, yo, bro, like, you really got niggas feeling type of way. And I and he hit me back and was like, yo, James, J boy. He was like, 
I drop my kids out of the fucking window. You think I really give a fuck what a nigga got to say about me? Come on now. He's like, <laughs> I drop, I drop all my fucks. I gave all my fucks away when I gave them kids out that window. Like, I don't give a fuck. So, like, you got to really think about who you're dealing with. You're dealing with a menace right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he picked her up full scale. Like, and, like, Megan was just blown away. Like, this thing, like, man, that's not even who you was with in the movie. You was with Taraji. Now you, now you, you power. Wasn't, wasn't, no, but hold on, wait. Wasn't that who she was in a movie with, with? In that movie where the white dude, they bought the house from the white dude? Possibly, but he was a killer. You, you know what I'm saying? You know what it is? You know what it is? You know what it is, you know what it is Michael? You know what it is, Michael? Let me talk to you. You know what I'm saying? And just because we're in the we're in the chat, I ain't gonna say everything that you said in the chat. But let me say, let me say this, let me say this for show purposes. Let me say this for show purposes. 50 got you feeling your fucking self. You in power. You, you a cop. You got a little role. You charging Monet and them 30%. You ain't charging Jonathan. Now, you forget what Jonathan did to that nigga in Creed 3, all right? Now, you forget what Jonathan was about to do to Ant-Man and what he done did with a gun, all right? Jonathan is known for going too crazy with these roles. So, I will scale it back some, you know, but to me personally, you know. Now, for context... Michael Ely did dap up uh, Jonathan Majors first. You know, I want to get that out the way. But, you know, I do want to know what is too much of a hug? Clearly, jo clearly from listening to Josh, Josh is only too far when he stick a thumb in the butt. Me personally, I just hit a handshake or a head knock. Go. I'm not touching or doing nothing for your old lady. I'm like J. Cole, handshake and all that. Now, you got niggas like Josh who are like Amari Hardrick, who went up there and kissed Beyonce on the side of the cheek. You got to watch scandalous-ass niggas like them because they the type of niggas that sit there saying... Like, what are you talking about? Did you see the movie Intruder? No, but listen to it. Like, I was... That, that, that's what I'm saying. The last movie they did, all the movies you named with them in it were older movies. They just did a movie in 2019 called Intruder, and they was married couples, and they fought off the dude that was taking over their fucking house, and they fought him together and ended up killing the dude in the end. Like, he wasn't a villain, so they just did a movie recently, like, where they were close. So, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, like... He also killed his kids. He also dropped him from a second-story window because his wife was running late with KFC. Like, how good is a, a family bowl or the chicken bowl, the, the chicken bowl from KFC? I, I, you keep saying this, and I don't know what you're talking about. Bro, I'm trying to tell you, Michael Ely is a menace. There's no other nigga. First off, is, Tyler is Perry, it, this, was, you, this was the last, this was the last, this was the last, huh? You talking about a movie? You talking about? I, I, do you think Michael Ely be walking the streets in real fucking life? He dropped his no, kid. No, 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 I'm saying I'm saying it as in what movie are you talking about? Like for Colored Girls, yeah, the movie, the famous line. So you doing the bending? You ain't never heard that Janet Jackson line. Look what that movie was, bro. This what I'm saying. Nigga, when what is a good time? When is a good time for? You? When is a good time in your life to drop kids out the window? Do with that has nothing to do with him and making good. Him and make good just had a movie in 2019. Look, the emotional trauma it is for me to act like I'm getting dropped out a window. All right, you may never get over it. All right, all I know is, but uh, all I know is that woman was two minutes late getting home with uh, a box, a family box from KFC. Now, the KFC famous bowl is good. Okay, I'm not splattering my kids over the sidewalk for it. Okay, now Zaxby's is good, it is amazing. A lot of people but if don't I don't get an extra, if I don't get an extra tongue torch, if I don't get an extra tongue torch sauce from Zaxby's, Zaxby's, yeah, yeah wow, that's wow, that's, that's crazy. crazy. If y'all want to sponsor the Eight Morning Ninety Two podcast, oh, where we oh, always keep on hunting, sound a little crazy, but go ahead. Huh? You said what? Something about that. I said pause. Something about that just sound a little crazy. I just don't like the way that the way you said that. No, I got you. But you know, like if I don't get an extra tongue, yeah, that's wild. If I don't get extra uh yeah, hot sauce from Zaxby's, yeah, I'm wild. That was wild. That was wild. That was wild. That was, I, 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 that was wild. If I don't get extra, that was wild. No, don't even worry about the sauce, Zaxby. Just 
Just sponsor them from the show. Don't even sponsor me. Don't even actually, actually, don't even sponsor me because you're just gonna send me just that sauce. And I don't want to have to say, I don't want to have to say, oh, get your get your limited edition 8192 tug torch sauce. Use a yeah, if you usually get a special, get a get a hoochie, get a get a hoochie tongue torch. No, nah, I'm good. Um, so no, nah, I don't want that sponsor. All right. Me off. I couldn't hear the conversation. I kept saying, "Why? Why he keep repeating this?" <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no, I'm all in. Uh, Zach, be y'all good? Chicken so good. Got a nigga question. How far I'll go? But some chicken. You get what I'm saying? That's how y'all understand. You don't understand how good some a nigga will go. I'm, I'm, I'm about to cross the line. It's July 12th, and I'm out here acting with some June 1st to 30th. Type of conversation. Now this some prideful. This some prideful shit about his head. I'm out here asking for some Zaxby tongue torch on a day like this today. Pause in it. No pause. But Zaxby, if y'all gonna sponsor nigga, sponsor me for anything else but the sauce. Pause. But uh <laughs> all I'm saying is Michael was a little too wild, you know. And I just want to know, you know, do you think that? Clearly not, because obviously there's no limit on what. Joshua Ely would do what a motherfucker. Clearly, when yeah, you walk, say, when you walk say, away, you do this. Like I said, I have talked to people. I've been, I've been, I've hugged and all that shit. And I ain't never, I've never got the the aura or the atmosphere that somebody felt some type of way about it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. I ain't never, I ain't never got the like, damn, like this dude looking like, damn, why he hugging my old lady like that? Why? Like, no, nah, because like I said, most of the time, it's somebody that's my friend. They, they I already know they my friend. And you the dude, we ain't probably went out and shit. So they already know that this my this my best friend. I'm close to this person. So you know, Josh saying, type like, nigga to say, like, Josh type nigga say that nigga insecure. Okay, so what? I got a boner. What the fuck you getting mad for, nigga? That's your girl though. You the one fucking the so what, bro? Because your girl give me hard. You mad at me for that, bro? If I took her out of my, my pants standing up, that's a little wild. Like, I ain't doing all that. Oh, nah, bro. I hey, bro. I ain't picking her up and putting her legs around me and shit like that. Like, he just picked up a head. Like, I ain't seen her in a minute. Picked up, shoulders up there, walking through shit, girl. Every time you see me, I'm brick. Now, every time you see me, I'm brick, bro. Get your man, bro. Why your man insecure, man? That's my sister. That's my sister. So yeah, I don't know if you might not be the best person. I think, I think what made that, I think what really made that video, because I watched that video a couple of times. I didn't know that was a video you was gonna show, but I watched it a couple of times. What made that video uncomfortable is just how how uh damn, what's the nigga name from Creed? Uh what's Jonathan the nigga? Major. Michael B. Jordan. It's it's the way Jonathan Major, it's his, it's just his aura. He just seemed like every time I see a video with him making good, he just seemed like he hating. Like he just he just got to look like he just hating like oh man y'all don't like even even with the red carpet shit and them them asking him like hey can you step back a little bit so we can take pictures of making good when he was sweating when he was sweating see man you you one of them type of uh, I look I I know this is about Jonathan me personally I ride for Jonathan you know what I'm saying and I know this. That Jonathan said, y'all bitch ass niggas. Almost. I noticed this about Jonathan. When Jonathan look like he about to go he white with a rapper. Jonathan, good, I, I, I stopped fucking with him. You said what? I th- I said, once Jonathan got with Megan Good, I said, oh, So this is good. hate, huh? So this is, I, I, it's all fun. Oh, okay, see? See? So, so now, so now, okay. So we can get it right here. See, look, I, 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 I'm all, see? So look, see, look at this. I don't want to see her happy. You know so look, y'all, like, we got breaking news. We got breaking news. So obviously, we know why this nigga was found guilty. Uh, and for minor domestic, we'd never heard of this shit till Najee took the stage. Y'all noticed he was gone for a good little minute around the time when the verdict he was deployed. But uh, and now you see when Michael Ely dropped them kids out the window, you can see who was behind them saying, Do it. Now you said you see it. He was go see intruder, go see intruder. And then now he promoted the nigga movies and shit like that. Now you see that I didn't even know Michael Ely. Like I said, Michael doing too fucking much. He got that thirty percent from my name. He's starting to feel him fucking himself. Uh, oh, feeling his fucking self. God damn. Uh, but Tennessee, a too long, to me, before. you said what? It's been in a little Tennessee. Been in Tennessee a little bit too long. The words, the words blending together. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, but nah, man, yeah, he can't. Nah, you can back the fuck up, Michael. If you knew that was his girl, but like I said, he did give. And I'll, I'll probably post it. He did give Jonathan Majors uh, a dap-up hug first. I just, like I said, I just think that when 
like I said, I, I don't know. Megan, like I said, hey, they do what they do. Like I said, if you round my shoulder, like just hand not a handshake at best. But you know, obviously, y'all different type of demon. You know what I'm saying? Y'all some true blood legends. You know what I'm saying? Y'all some sickle sickle cell seekers. Y'all might be some super cells. You know what I'm saying? Some niggas who eyes light up and then y'all turn demons. So I can't I can't fuck with y'all intrinsic as um intrinsic as associators you know what i'm saying i can't fuck with anybody that's on y'all diabolical levels and obviously this is more about jonathan than michael so obviously we know the real root of the issue stay strong jonathan you can clearly see from the way that he dressed that he dressed like somebody from medieval times or like he about to go fly fishing that he gave y'all a chance and y'all try to fuck with him so he don't give a fuck about all this this social shit no more because y'all try to kill him and then still he rides so I stand with you, King. You did a major service by not knocking his ass the fuck out. Now, Michael, this is not power. This is not any of them shits that you got to roll for. This is real fucking life. And the way that that gray is, you ain't Ricky from the barbershop. Them braids is no longer there. You no longer a killer. All right? So you might want to back the fuck up. That's all I'm going to say. Keep Megan good on the ground and everything will be good. And goddamn, between her, Ashanti, and... Sophia Valguera, them motherfuckers is aging backwards. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my god! Oh my god! Mm. Oh my god! So, what's your final take on it, Josh? On what? For how you lifting girls up by the cooch lips? I, mean, I, mean, like I, said, I, I think I think it's whatever your relationship is with that person. Like honestly, you know what I'm saying? Whatever your relationship is with that person. However, you know whatever friendship y'all have, or whatever. Especially if you know that, if you know her. And don't really know him, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it is what it is, you know. And let, as long as you ain't doing no disrespectful, as long as she don't feel like, damn, this is. Di-, but like when you see her face, she seemed ecstatic about it. She was like, "Oh my god, I ain't seen you so long." So I think it was just, I think it was just an in the moment kind of situation, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, if you I look mean, at this second hand, you only see one hand grabbing. And then the other hand was like that. So you really gotta watch a nigga like that. You gotta watch a nigga like that. But shout out, shout out to my nigga. Shout out to my nigga John Small. Uh you got he the type of nigga that sends you birthday cards with his shirt off for his homeboys, girlfriends, and shit like that, talking about just for the family. So you know what I'm saying? You gotta watch out niggas like Josh and John and Michael Ely. You gotta watch out niggas like that that say whatever I knew you had, whatever I'm comfortable, whatever these I'm comfortable ass niggas, what they comfortable doing with somebody else significant other. These are the type of niggas that you just sit there and say, how's everything going? You just tell them good. You know what I'm saying? Don't even bring them around. Don't have family events. Don't have family barbecues. Don't. These are the type of niggas that you just keep your significant other away because they they operate on what they what they used to no say no shit like that and i feel like all of all my close friends and i'm close with them and their significant other like all these new comes we all give each other hugs so i i ain't never fucking but i ain't never lifted none of my friends significant other up and spent around with her you know what I'm saying like that's a stretch but yeah. Pause. i like i don't know like i i think that was just in a moment kind of thing like oh my god bro like i haven't seen you in like three four years like we were so close like I don't, I didn't see nothing. It didn't feel ill willed or no shit like that. You right? I don't know how it felt because only Michael was the one feeling it. So you know we gotta ask him after the day, man. But you know, um, how do you miss you? Uh, you know, like I said, I hope they let you from the temple to come back again and shoot the shit, man. Talk with us. Um, we'll wrap it here. Uh, we're gonna end it. We're gonna end it right here. We're not gonna talk about. Man, I would, but I, I have uh, something went in the sky. A beacon went in the sky. Um, That's crazy. Just hold it right, man. You know what I'm saying? What, what you want to say on it? Go ahead. Get, go ahead, Nadi. Get, say your take I on mean, it. My, 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 you know what? My real question was, after all the nonsense, after all the bullshit, are you still saying that Drake won this? No, Drake lost. I can't even hold that up. I'll sit there and say that the not like me. I said it last time, and uh, Najee really wanted to take his take on the the not like us video. I felt like the not like us video should have came out when the song came out in May. I feel like to come out July fourth and all that is really just it's just me. It's just me. It's just me. But he lost. But for a nigga, for for a nigga that rolled back to back till the wheels fell off, I'm not gonna tell a nigga what he should do with his song. I mean, I, like I said, I don't know. Like you know, said, short take on the whole thing. I just think that 
I think it came out perfect timing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because all it did is just stretched out. It's almost like I'm stretching out this fucking agony of me fucking you. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, bro, fuck you, motherfucker. And I'm going to just keep stretching it. Every fucking award show that came out this year, they played the song. Like, it's damn near uh, erased all the other shit. We don't even remember the fucking Drake songs. Like, they ain't played not like us every fucking second I hear the shit. Like, they just talking about the USA team just beat Canada. And when they get done beating Canada, they played not like us. You know what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. every opportunity that anybody in anything professional has, they make sure they play that song. So it's I the song of the summer. Before. It's the song I, of the summer. My only issue with it is Kendrick got to. Say Kendrick got to put out a pedophile anthem, but he had no proof of nothing. Drake got, to, but Drake is the only one who had to show proof on anything. I mean, That's a great really song. Because even with even with the with the music video and Kendrick and his old lady Crip walking. That's what I'm that, saying. But that's what I'm saying. But Kendrick never proved anything about Drake. Where's eleven year old daughter? Where's the pedophile? I mean, none that's of them, all, like, it was, it was a beef. That's, that's what I'm beef. saying. That's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, it was a beef full of lies. But Kendrick had the better song, and all these yeah. niggas sat there and flipped on Aubrey. So I want him to take note. All them niggas, and also I'll say this: he had that Atlanta line, right? Ain't nobody stop. Ain't nobody from Atlanta or Houston said a goddamn thing. But I, I also mean, want every. A lot of people came up. Like I, I've seen, it's been so. Many no, I'm saying like I'm talking about. I'm talking about. I'm talking about against. Like you know, like taking up on Kendrick shit. You get what I'm saying? Everybody no, I'm still saying, roll I'm with Drake. I'm saying, have, I'm saying like on like when I be on Snapchat, you have the people doing the interviews and they come and they talk about shit. So I've seen so much shit. Like it's I've seen crazy. regular. I've seen regular people say Drake took the sound culture vulture, but I've never seen any. I didn't hear any artist from Atlanta. Sit there and play like like uh not like us. I didn't hear them sit there and dispute it. Like all the other niggas that switched up, the Metro, the Weekends, all them niggas, Rick Ross, all them niggas, how they switched up. I only niggas I saw was L.A. niggas, and I want everybody that was on that pop up stage to remember that that this is his planting money trees because the niggas that Drake helped that ain't from L.A. or whatever want to switch up. They didn't say a goddamn word. Atlanta and Houston. They didn't say a goddamn word. They let that line ride and they didn't say shit. And he didn't have to, he didn't, just like he pulled his family in the video. This is my last point. Just like he pulled his family in the video and he proved Drake's point and had Dave Free direct the video. I didn't see any pedophile shit. I didn't see any 11 year old daughter. I didn't see nothing, but we singing a pedophile anthem. So if they was going to do the battle of the lies, Kendrick just sold the better lie. But the fact that Kendrick got to pull out his truth, but didn't have to pull out none of the stuff that he said was my only issue with it. I mean, so, so I, I, like I said, I would, I would beg to differ on that because the, the difference about all of the shit that's been happening and then just social media, social media dragged everything out, all the shit about Drake and his songs. They've been breaking down the songs about pedophile talking to little girl, like just so much shit, but nothing has been dragged out about Kendrick. Like you haven't seen not like, and it's you know even when shit was going on, everything has been all Drake, 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 Drake. It's all been like, oh well, let me show you. Oh, let me tell you this story. All oh, me it's all been against Drake. And so I think the biggest, the biggest L wasn't really just the song and shit. The biggest L was you, Drake. I would say is the hit maker. I'm gonna say if we got a person that's a hit maker of our time, and this like in the, in the last five to six, seven years. Drake, if he put some shit out, he hit maker. If he put some shit out, it's gonna blow up. If he put a video out, it's gonna blow up. Whatever he gonna say, it's gonna blow up. So you beat the hit maker at, at hits, at popularity. So you beat him in, in views, you beat him in video views. You on a hit, in, not on views, on a hit, on a hit. Let me finish my let me finish yeah, my on a I'm saying I'm saying every aspect of where you could beat the hit maker at, you beat him. You beat him. You you damn near erased his whole side out. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what Drake said, even if it was true and that true or fake and that fake, you erased it. Like the shit was so popping that you were, you you changed everybody's side. I'm talking about like political. We like even when I, I think Drake's biggest killer was when he killed Mick Mills. I think that was the craziest shit. You know whatever. But even at that time when he killed Mick Mills, 
that shit was not everybody went playing that shit. Like every fucking, I'm talking about we seeing fucking, you know, people in the Democrat party, we seeing NBA, WNBA, we seeing rappers, we seeing movie stars. We, like everybody is on this nigga throat. So I think that you you made one of the, the most popular people and you beat him in popularity. You know what I'm saying? Because not saying that Kendrick wasn't a big time name, but now motherfuckers talking about, oh yeah, man, Kendrick the best. Like they saying shit that's just crazy that we ain't never heard before. And and that, that's what I'm saying. When you beat somebody like that, that's that's crazy. Like, like I said, you beat the hit makers that making hits. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like with anything that you did, I I stumped it. So I just like I said, I just felt like the the L that he took was like he if he come back and they keep saying like oh well drake's team talking about he got albums and he got this and blah 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 and if he do that it's got to be on point and then for my my last take on it the biggest part of the l where i kind of lost you know whatever i had for the drake situation was drake at his concert playing the song and rapping to it to the bbl drizzy to the not like us he dancing on stage to it that's the lamest shit like that's like me saying yo fat ass nigga and then you come out with a fat ass nigga shirt that's the lamest shit that a motherfucker can do is like everybody fucking like everybody ass up, and i'm just gonna go oh man yeah man i like that's the lamest shit a motherfucker can do like i why fuck, ain't shit. no other beef I, I, like biggie after Tupac had the song against Biggie, Biggie ain't sitting in his place, motherfucker, in the car like, oh yeah, play that Tupac shit. Hell no, that's lame as fuck. So when that I shit, raw happens, shit, I think raw shit more lamer. I think, I think raw shit lamer, because but Ross got his ass. Up. For me, I think I think, I, I, two people I, that I think is lame as fuck, just regardless. Ross. DJ Cali, I think both of them niggas lame. I think they just but lame. I, I, I don't want to hear what they talk about. I don't care about nothing they got to say. Like, so oh, yeah. anytime Ross talk, I just I, I skip the video. I think it's yeah. lame as hell. But I think you're right. I'm not gonna dispute it. I think when you when everybody's saying it, you can't sit there and dispute it. I still think the best song, the best video, the best song clearly by popular demand was not like us. I think Family Matters was better than Not Like Us, just because he was rapping. Um, I think the best video was Family Matters. That's just me. And I still think that, but Kendrick won it, but I still think that's the best song. I think that's the best diss. And I think that's the best video out of this whole beef. If you really go back and watch like what he did for that, but also, like I said, not like us, you had months to sit there and make that. He did that in a span of some days. That's why I also give him credit for that. He had time to do that. You got three, four months to make it. I'm not about to sit there and give you credit for months yeah. to make a write a goddamn movie when Drake did it with him. The cold shit that he did that's went against the other videos. He had time to put that in there. Like, what yeah, Drake did this one in a couple of days. But I agree with you. I, if he did it, I don't think I think when Drake, if he does respond, he will have time to take it, come out on your own. Since you clearly see that this nigga's gonna take all the time in the world, don't rush to have a battle like you did with me. But like you said, I'm not gonna dispute none of that. Um I, I take the take. It is what it is. Like I said, once you got all these people, I just want all these niggas to keep their receipts. You, be, you better get your feature with Kendrick then. For all y'all niggas that jumped on it, see if he'll jump on your track. But as far as popularity, it's still, uh, Aubrey still got it. It's the number one. So uh, we'll wrap it there. Uh, Josh, you got any closing words for everybody? Nah, man. Just, you know, I ain't been on here in a while. You know, we in a different time zone. So. You know, thank you for bringing me back on. It's it's always a pleasure. You know, what I'm saying there's so much shit be going on nowadays. It's like easy to talk about stuff. You know, what I'm saying like everything crazy be fucking happening all the time. So, yeah. well, of course, man, it's family. Like I said, it's nothing. I be telling people all the time. Just if they can say the word, whatever, we can coordinate it. Like I said, the only thing I just got to get back is getting consistent with my recordings, and then it's in there. But like I said, it's no problem, man. Like I said, we'll definitely get you back on whenever you're free. Whenever you're not practicing on your swords and your techniques and your bow and arrows and your shogun techniques bro we'll get you down there well i'm always free bro like th like this time in the mornings and friday saturday most of the time i'm sleep i sleep until two bro so you know what i'm saying like right now i'm up because this if i if this wouldn't have been happening i would have been asleep you know what I'm saying? yeah so, now mind you i'm making a big sacrifice for josh so actually this ain't this worked for him <laughs> so he knows the sacrifice i'm talking about I told you anytime. I said I did, and then okay. So this is the only thing. At the weekend, certain things become spontaneous, 
at my point of day that are open free for you. So that's why I said at the time when I made it on the weekends, the hoochie daddy sign pops up in the sky. And so let's just say it'll yeah. probably be easy to make it on my Jarvis weekend. Let's just say that. Let's just go for that. All right. Let's just do that. So we'll wrap it there. <laughs> uh, this has been another episode. Make sure y'all hit us up. Uh, check it out. We had 22,000 subscribers. Thank you. We were already there, but uh, about 23,000 subscribers. Uh, make sure y'all check it out. Appreciate y'all checking out the last video, watching Ross get his ass whooped. Make sure y'all keep following uh, IG page and TikTok pages down because y'all just need to fuck with the show anyway. Fuck what I put on the social media sites. Make sure you hit us up at the 8 morning 92 podcastcom or if you got the cell phone number and want to come rock with us, just come and hit uh, text me. Other than that, follow the show. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. And this has been another episode. Peace. When I look at the OJ case, I got to admit, the whole case got me emotionally disturbed. <laughs> I knew what Ornthal was crazy when he wrote the book, If I Killed My Wife. <laughs> if? Man, you left blood over my house. All the evidence you left. OJ is the only man to beat DNA. I really don't know what to think. When I first started watching the trial about a year ago, the first thing I saw was the opening statement of the prosecution. When Marsha Clark finished listing all the evidence they had against OJ, I said, OJ did it. They may as well lock him up right now. I don't even know why they're going on with a trial, all that evidence. If Law and Order had that case, they wouldn't even need a whole hour to convict him. <laughs> Just one to do. <laughs> The next to do, his ass is in jail. We found a bloody glove to do. But I kept on watching till smooth Johnny Cochran got up and started breaking it down. Johnny Cochran got a point. They got too much evidence against OJ. Nobody could have been that damn stupid. And even if it was, even if it was, no one man could have made all them mistakes. How could one man drop one bloody glove at the crime scene, take the matching bloody glove to his own house, drink blood all up and down Rockingham Boulevard, blood in the bushes, blood in the grass, left his hat on top of one of the bodies, blood on the fence, blood on the outside of the Bronco, blood inside the Bronco. He couldn't have done it. He got to his house, climbed over the wall and broke in his own estate for what he lived there. Ain't he got a key to the gate? Knocked on the wall, woke Kato's lazy, ignorant, no telling half an ass up. OJ couldn't have done all that. The OJs couldn't have done all that stuff. Cochran's so smooth, he got OJ thinking he didn't really do it. Because he had to leave LA, because when OJ go out to eat at a restaurant, they don't even put a knife on his table. Like, nah, we'll cut your food for you. This fool come out the kitchen like he three years old. Be all in squares. I seen him eating a steak with a spoon. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 podcast. Are you, being you know how we do. We always hey, keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah.